Before we go any further, let's look at some of the different ways to think about sexual interest in minors. Up until the 1980s, there wasn't a whole lot of attention paid to this in the media or by researchers. We knew it was there, but there wasn't much in the way of educated or sophisticated thinking about it. There was the usual Freudian and behaviorist views that were pretty much the same for everything. Yes, your mother smoked stogies. Every time a bell rings, that loves doggy learns new things. But that was about it. But by the time the media and even Congress got involved, society was seeing sexual predators in every preschool, locker room, playground, and synagogue. This led to viewing folks with this interest as qualitatively different or other than normal people. All kinds of clinical research and popular buzzwords were developed to say you are not like us, and laws were passed to keep them out of circulation and away from society. Enter the 2000s, when stories slowly percolated up through the noise about 10-year-olds being put on registries for life, and 7-year-olds being arrested for kissing a girl at school, and folks started wondering whether we went too far. At the same time, researchers were gathering data on what makes someone high risk or not, what subtypes of interest there are, etc. Other folks were recognizing the hysteria as an example of the same kind of moral panic that has been applied to witches, communists, and various religious groups. Feminists saw interest in kids as another example of male entitlement and power and control. And still others had asked just how harmful is sex with kids. The last one I address in this course. Lately there's been some theorizing and a small amount of data on whether to view pedophilia as a sexual orientation much like being heterosexual or gay, lesbian, bisexual, or even asexual. I won't go into the strengths and weaknesses of this line of thinking here, other than to say that the data is equivocal, in my view, and the theorizing hinges on how you define orientation. The goal of this course is not about labeling the interest, but in helping you know how to deal with it. So is the origin of arousal to minors biological or social? The obvious answer is yes to both, with the addition of psychological or the specific personality of the person. The other parts of the answer are this. First, there is no one state or trait as pedophilia. I don't think the term describes a static disorder or condition, but a loose pattern of arousal and sometimes behavior that has several causal factors and pathways of origin. We'll talk about the pathways in this course and how each one requires different management strategies. The second part of the answer is that biological factors, your physical appearance, hormones, brain wiring, etc., are completely entwined with your psychological and social experiences in a mutually influencing tangle, even down to the molecular level during chromosomal replication. So there's absolutely no room for either or. If you have casual or persistent sexual interest in minors, you will experience difficulties in the world as we know it. 
One response would be to fight for your rights to be recognized and not be discriminated against. Check out the section here on effects of sex with minors, and after you do, ask yourself, can I legitimately argue for rights to exploit others or to engage them in potentially harmful behavior? Another response would be to throw up your hands and live celibate. Maybe you would look at child porn or write stories to masturbate to. As an option, I think this has at least two drawbacks. There's a correlation between child porn users and those who actually molest kids, so the celibacy route is fraught with risk to you and to children. The second one is that by simply putting up with the interest, you prevent yourself from living your life as fully and satisfyingly as you might. We'll see in this course that it often isn't only or even primarily about sex. If you improve your functioning where you need to, you will not only be able to express your sexuality more freely, but other areas of your life will also improve. That's why I'm taking the approach that I do with this course. The idea is that it's a win-win for you and the children that get to grow up without being molested. They deserve a happy life, and you do too.